even the simplest effort, you know, or just acknowledging a person's presence. Like many times when you walk into a waiting room, do you just walk in and not say anything? Or when you walk in, do you say, uh, good evening, you know, basically to everyone in the room or good morning, or, or maybe you just tip your head or if you're wearing a hat, maybe you tip your hat or maybe you just put up your hand and wave. It's sort of a way to acknowledge, to let people know that you recognize their presence, right? Well, you know, I happen to think that while God is extremely complicated to us, that ultimately it's really very simple, which is why I call this podcast basically biblical. Because really, it is just about the basics. Even in the Ten Commandments, God is really just asking us to acknowledge Him first, recognize Him, understand Him for who He is. Then the rest of the Ten Commandments talk about our relationship with each other. Again, acknowledging our mother and father, understanding them, respecting them, appreciating their efforts. And then later, how we treat each other one-on-one. -on -one. You know, don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, forgive each other. Acknowledgement. So I think at the end of the day, God's crying out to us trying to impress upon us the many different layers to himself. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, but also the many aspects, the many traits, the many behaviors, uh, the many ways he expresses his love toward us is like the ultimate example that his actions, his words, his crying out to us is the ultimate expression and example of the very ways we mere mortals are doing the very same things. Many times, people who commit suicide, you'll often hear that they are crying out. Now, if you had been observing this person over time, you would have seen that the crying out first began maybe in an expression of clothing, maybe an expression of words and attitudes, maybe an expression of poems or songs or various writings. And then their crying out became more and more intense. Maybe, and some people would refer to that as acting out. Well, ultimately, an attempt to get others to see them. So when we think of seeing someone, when we say, I see you, when we say, I appreciate you, I understand you, I acknowledge you, is that all we mean or are we looking deeper? So in these words, expressions and names of God, I would ask that we would think of that as a way 
to focus in that lens, you know, bring that microscope down, focus that telescope closer, peel back the layers of the onion, and try to see God in these various names. So as I said, we would talk about L. The word L is uh, derived from a root word that means power, might, or strength. And as we discuss, it is one of the most basic Hebrew words for God. Now, initially, it was referring to pagan gods. But ultimately, it is referring to the God of Israel, the one true God. And as you will notice in the scriptures and the rest of the names that we will review, El is often associated with other words like El Shaddai, which we'll talk about later, or El Echad, or El Emet. So it's rarely used by itself. And <laughs> as we have discovered, it takes a lot of names to even attempt to fully describe a God who is infinite, right? A God who is the beginning and the end. A God who created the universe and all that is in it. Uh, a simple word or expression of L is hardly sufficient, right? So it's no wonder that we continue uh, to struggle with this concept of God. One way to do this might be to look at a few scriptures. And I'd like to first look at first, um, I want to say first uh, Chronicles and if you can go there with me. First Chronicles 29 and 11. And it reads, Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. And then looking at Job. Now, <laughs> remember we have referred to Job, and Job is a very interesting character. Most often we think of Job as, you know, having lost everything and then God replacing it all. And for some people, that's the extent of the story. However, there are scriptures throughout the book of Job that really speaks to him not just being uh, holy and being seen in God's eyes as holy and exceptional, but also God was uh, God was 
wanting us to see Job as a very human, very regular type of man. In fact, uh, if you read Job thoroughly, you will see that Job struggles with the same issues that we do, uh, particularly after he lost everything and then his friends attacked him and his wife attacked him and he had lost everything. And then uh, not only did he lose everything and all, all those people that were close to him, but he also lost uh, his physical health. He had boils, painful boils that were given to him and all these other tormenting type of physical ailments. And through all of those struggles, God, uh, God entertained Job. He, he allowed Job to ask questions and to challenge. And then God dealing with Job in a very, um, how do I want to say, matter of fact kind of way, a very straightforward way, you know, at times God would say, well, uh, where were you when I created the universe? You know, trying to uh, remind Job that while he had allowed the devil to do these things, he was still in control. And so in Job 26 and 14, the scripture reads, Lo, these are parts of his ways, but how little a portion is heard of him. But the thunder of his power, who can understand? Wow. Job here is really not just asking a question, but he is asking us to think. Think about this. Earlier in this same chapter, he says, he divided the sea with his power and by his understanding he smites through the proud by his spirit he has garnished the heavens and his hand has formed the crooked serpent job in chapter 26 is really breaking down all of the ways in which he has understood god or learned to understand God. And ultimately in verse 14, he's really impressing upon us, lo, these are parts of his ways. And how little a portion is heard of him. Yet the thunder of his power who can understand or who can fully understand? So even Job, a person who had now experienced God in so many various different ways, so strong the highs and such low of lows through various situations, even Job now is saying, hey, but listen, these are just parts. These are just little portions who can really fully understand his power. So when we just say L as God, we have to understand that we are actually pulling upon all of the various aspects, parts, portions, layers, of who God is. So then next, I said that we would talk about Jehovah. So let us uh, examine the word Jehovah.